Today is May 20th, 2014, and my name is Cesar Gallegos. I'm the archivist at the Charles M. Schultz Museum and Research Center, and I'm sitting here with Joseph Danowitz in his lovely home in Sarasota, Florida. And could you please state your name, your date, and place of birth, and your current or former profession? My name is Joseph Danowitz. I was born in Jackson, Michigan, and I am now 80 years old. And I was born March 22nd, 1934. And uh, what is your connection with Peanuts and Schultz? Say, I became aware of the Peanuts characters first around 1958. And at that time I was working military electronics. I was stationed at a site in Alaska. And Peanuts was very popular. The comic strip was the first thing that uh, that everybody wanted to, to, to read at the uh, breakfast table in the mess hall. And uh, we, w we would uh, usually get a chuckle from Snoopy's antics. And uh, it, it was just a, a very uh, pleasurable event that we looked forward to every day. And as I can see, it, you're pretty big collector. Um, when did you start collecting and was Peanuts the first thing that you collected? Or? I, I, I think I really got, got started uh, in nine, 1958 and, and it kind of w was triggered by a gift that my younger brother was, was given some short time earlier and that was the, the Charlie Brown hard rubber doll that, uh, that he wouldn't share with me. <laughs> So I had to start my own collection. So that was the first piece that you acquired? Uh, I didn't, I, I, well actually, I, I, had, I had actually uh, claimed his for a while and then he reclaimed it so then I had to start my own collection. But I, I think I, I had it for, uh, uh, for several months before he, he finally reclaimed it. But that, that, that was where my interest was triggered that and, and, and the reading of the comic strips daily in the morning with the officers in the, at, at the, uh, in the mess hall in Alaska. Do you still have that hunger for a doll? The, the rubber doll? Yeah, that, that's the one that's... Oh, that's the one that's up there. Yeah. How about your brother? Does he still have... He still has his. <laughs> wow. He might have it in the safe. <laughs> Can you tell me uh, what's the most special piece in your collection to you? Gosh, I I think almost anything of, with Snoopy is, is is special to me because he has so many persona that uh, I, I find myself thinking like him sometimes. So what persona do you identify most with? Uh, Joe Cool. Joe Cool? <laughs> Great. And you said your brother uh, also, does he also collect peanuts? Yes, and, and, and he, his alter ego is Charlie Brown. So when we correspond to each other, he always addresses me as Snoopy and signs off as Charlie Brown and I address him likewise. Can you talk a little bit about that as to why there, you connect with that particular well, persona? Well, because my name is Joseph and, and, and I and go by Joe mostly. Uh, that's my association with Joe Cool. But also, uh, you know, he was the, the big man on campus. <laughs> and uh, it, it's uh, nice to have something like that to identify with. Can you tell me a little bit about why your brother connects to Charlie Brown? Because he is, uh, he loves baseball and he loves, uh, he loves sports in general, but especially baseball is his preeminent all-time number one sports that anywhere in the world. And uh, he volunteer coaches uh, girls 
ball team, and uh, I think he has uh, <laughs> he has a lot of uh, of uh, disappointments in common with Charlie Brown. And in fact, my brother loves baseball so much that he had established a Joseph and Helen Daniel Witz, uh fund, a field of dreams, and that he selects one of the girls on his uh, softball team that has to maintain high scholastic uh, uh, grades, and he then, I think, gifts a a thousand dollar scholarship to that girl. That's great. And uh, that's one of his pet projects. That's great. Which, uh, incidentally, uh, that is at the Jackson, Michigan High School, and it's the same school that Tony Dungy attended as a as, as a student. And I think Tony's both parents are teachers in the. Jackson, Michigan school system. And you guys are also members of the museum. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, my, my brother is also a member of the Schultz Museum and we, we generally uh, exchange the membership uh, for each other every other year because I try to pay his membership and then he'll reciprocate by paying mine the following year. So uh, we, we keep exchanging our, our m memberships and so I, I think, I think uh, Karen Johnson probably knows our both names. <laughs> Is there anything else that you collect besides peanuts related? You know, I, I, I've been a collector most of my adult life since, uh, since junior high because some of the collections, and I might say, I really don't think of myself as a collector. I, I, I think of myself as an opportune buyer because I collect chess sets. I collect firearms. I collect uh, many, uh, many different uh, antiques, Asian antiques, uh, woodblock prints. Uh, just seems like like I was born to collect. When when I was in uh, in high school and uh, I used to walk to school because uh, we didn't have a bus that came to my area, and usually on the way home I would stop at what at that time they called rummage shops, and they were just junk stores where people would uh, uh, end up items that they didn't want that were for sale and uh, very reasonably and I would always stop and see what kind of treasures I might find like a, a vintage Edison cylinder player that you could buy back then for fifteen dollars and they worked <laughs> and not only that uh, the Edison ones were sold with a lifetime guarantee on, on the diamond needle stylus that uh, the stylus that was in and, and, and they would still service them. And uh, to say, I, I had one of those. <laughs> but uh, I just I was, was born to collect. Well, so you said high school was the first, yes. first time you started. And, and, and that would have been in, uh, uh, I, I think I was a freshman and started high school in 1949. Wow. Graduated in 1952. And aside from that, is there anything else that you collected or that you really, really love to collect? Or? One of the other significant areas of collecting that importance to me are vintage cameras. Because when I was in high school, I thought that I would unseat Ouija as the pro-eminent photographer for Time Life. But uh, that didn't happen. But I still continued to... Uh, some interest in photography and acquired some of the professional type cameras and when I got to be an adult and these cameras were now obsolete I could afford them and so I I satisfied my unfilled fantasies of 
cameras that I couldn't afford in their prime now that they're vintage and I have them in my collection. So I have currently a collection of about 450 vintage cameras ranging from the uh, uh, wooden body uh, bellows cameras and twin lens reflexes and almost everything except Leicas because that's a collecting field in itself and, and very uh, sometimes unaffordable. <laughs> So I, uh, I collect the more ordinary box cameras and uh, believe it or not, a good part of my collection came from Goodwill stores where they would sell box cameras for 98 cents back in the uh, 60s because there just uh, well, wasn't a market for them. And sometimes when you're a collector on a budget, you pick to collect things that there's not much competition for. And that's, uh, as I say, I consider myself an opportunistic collector. I, I buy the cheap stuff and hope that it becomes valuable. You also said you, you collect uh, classic cars as well, or you had a collection of classic cars? Uh, I, I, I'm like on the very low, low end uh, because uh, that, that, that's truly a, a you know, rich man's uh, uh, hobby. But uh, it, it, again, it started, my, my dad had a 1930 Ford Model A Roadster. And I was about three or four years old. I can remember riding in a rumble seat of it. And, uh, and uh, I just wanted a copy of that same car. So what do you think makes Peanuts so special? What's the reason why you've collected for so many years? Well, it, 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 it's, it's the, uh, the attitude of the strip. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of strips, I find, are, are, have some mean-spirited issues just to get a laugh. And Schultz didn't believe in that. The, uh, the, the purity uh, of, of the people involved, the, the, the Peanuts gang, none of them are mean-spirited. Probably the worst one would be Lucy because <laughs> she'll slug you if you don't. <laughs> and can you tell me um how your collection developed over the years? Was there something that you really focused on in collecting or is it just overall just peanuts? Well, it usually uh, at, at, that, at that time in the 80s, uh, at Christmas time, uh, Schultz would uh, make a, a, a series of ornaments available, usually a half a dozen different uh, uh, characters would be Snoopy, Lucy, Linus, and, and, and they, they would all be part of a similar theme. Like they would either all be in a, in a <clears throat> vehicle of some such. One would be in a, in a boat, uh, a, a, a truck, a plane, and, and these were very inexpensive ornaments. They were like uh, retailing for either $2 or $2.95. And usually right after the Christmas season, the stores that had any left would, have, would put them on sale for half price. And I would go in and, and, and buy a, a whole set of them every year, and I was looking forward to it. And as I say, I, I started a, a, a trial list of, of all of the uh, various themes that, that were uh, used, and uh, that's kind of how I, I got some of the other members involved because they would furnish information to me of some things that I may not have seen yet and uh, it, uh, it just uh, kind of took off from there. Can you talk a little bit about that sort of community of other collectors? Well, uh, uh, it, it was, uh, I, I can't even remember for sure if we had a very minor membership fee or if there was no membership fee. 
the the only thing that that, that I remember uh, eliciting their help in is I was trying to to uh, because I I, I like to the a series of Christmas ornaments that came out every year. And I started collecting those and I wanted to catalog them. So I, I, I attempted to do a, a trial uh, compiling a, of the ones that had been issued so far. And of course, asked for uh, other members to submit a photo of, of ones that, that they had that maybe the other part of the country didn't know about and so on. And so I started uh, compiling a, a what they call a trial list of uh, ornaments, and uh, and uh, it, it got overwhelming <laughs> because the, there are the, the licensing agreements that uh, certain things are are made just for distribution in certain countries and not necessarily available in the United States that uh, that that you just can't uh, can't find them. <laughs> So what would you say would be the rarest thing that you, you have in your collection? I think it might be something other than one of the, the Peanuts characters. I, I think one, one of the things that, uh, that, that I uh, am happy to have is a, is a letter from one of Schultz's former secretaries, Pat Lytle, I think is the way you pronounce her name. And... Uh, I had contacted the Schultz uh, office about uh, intending to, to, to start a Peanuts Collectors Club and, uh, and called and, and talked with Pat and, and I got a response and, and we started a, a group of Snoopy lovers, uh, started a, a club uh, with, uh, with, with uh, members uh, that, that were all peanuts lovers. And can you tell me what year that was? Uh, that, that had to be in, in the early 80s, very early 80s, maybe uh, uh, 1983. So over the years you've collect, or you've amassed quite an amount of peanuts memorabilia. For you, is there a process behind that, behind going t towards this collection Figuring out what you want to do with it, what you what you want to collect, uh, how how do you approach something like this? Well, I think that uh, with, with the peanuts characters, uh, almost anything that I don't have that that's uh, that's well executed, I I want to add to my accumulation or collection, and. Uh, I, uh, I I like the the more elaborate uh, items. The, the more elaborate they are, the better I like them. The illuminated displays and so forth. And is there a thrill behind finding those pieces for you? Uh, you say the which? Is there a thrill behind? Finding those pieces, those rare pieces. You no, know, I usually uh, uh, scan through the uh, the department stores and, and and also in recent years the uh, big box stores like uh, Lowe's and and Home Depot are, are stocking a lot of peanuts characters for decorating for use in, in yard decoration and, and including the inflatable. Uh, ones now and so on, and I always ha have to make a point of checking those out. What about in the earlier years, like in the late 50s, 60s, how was collecting back then? Was it the same kind of formula, or did you...? Well, it, it, there was there was much less uh, choice of what's available, because uh, I think as far as ornaments, uh, th th they were usually limited to about five or six in, in a series, at a very nominal price of two ninety five or thereabouts, whereas uh, now the uh, with the resin cold cast uh, ornaments and some of the more elaborate animated and and uh, and and sound uh, added uh, can be pretty pricey, 
and not near as affordable as as the early ceramic uh, ornaments that uh, that were offered. Mm -hmm. But you still have to go and look. And uh, and you have to try to acquire the, anything that you don't have. <laughs> How did your family react uh, to your collection? Well, I think that they really uh, uh, share my interest in it, but also this makes it very easy on them when it's gift giving time, when it's my birthday or Christmas, because uh, they, they try to sneak to see uh, what, what I may have acquired recently so they don't duplicate, but, but it's a real challenge for them to find something peanuts that I don't already have. And and when they manage to do that, they're very elated. You had you had mentioned over the phone that you had built this room specifically for this collection? Well, as my Snoopy and Peanuts collection started to grow, uh, I would try to display it somewhere in the house in, in a proper glass display case that didn't need dusting very frequently. And uh, so I would have a uh, glass display case in one of the bedrooms or whatever. And I finally ran out of space to where I needed more display case space and didn't have it. So we ended up adding a 780 square foot addition on the second floor of the house, which was done a little over a year ago. And so the, the current uh, collection that I have of Peanuts characters is in that 780 square foot room. And some of the th pieces are connected up so that they can be turned on and, and uh, have uh, uh, motion and, and animation, and uh, and they're they're also kind of free of dust. And so, what are people's reactions when they come into this room? They're always very favorable, but they're they're just astounded. And uh, especially the younger types, you have to kind of keep a tight rein on them, but but they just go wild. And, uh, and it's amazing how many uh, pre-two-year-olds know Snoopy and, and adore Snoopy. How many pieces are in your collection? You know, I, I honestly have not did a head count. <laughs> but uh, but uh, it's, it's uh, significant. I don't even want to venture a guess because I, I have probably well over a hundred ornaments. And, uh, and in lots of Snoopies. <laughs> and I, I kind of, I, uh, I, I don't uh, shun them, but uh, the, the plush uh, items don't seem as important to me as, uh, as all the other things may, that are offered. Why is that? I don't know. It just uh, the, 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 they uh, they just seem not to have the uh, ability to capture all the nuances of of Snoopy, uh, like like uh, the, uh, the the uh, say the these porcelain or ceramic items, and uh, and 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 they just uh, are more true to the Schultz image. Then, uh, then the plush stuff ends up being. Can you tell me a little bit about how this collection is not only contained in this room? I notice you have some pieces around your, your home. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, I, I think Snoopy is, is 
so lovable that I have a, a Snoopy garden that uh, some plants around a statue of Snoopy. And uh, I have a, a lot, lot of different uh, things like the Mother's Day plates and, and Valentine's plates, uh, all with the Peanuts theme characters. And almost anything with peanuts on it, I, I, I have a home for it. You notice you also have a mailbox out in front. Oh yes, I have a uh, a mailbox uh, uh, at, at the entrance to my front door that I use as a message center. People drop off my mail or, or, or notes for for something that I need to communicate with them, and it's it's. Guess what? Snoopy reclining on his doghouse. Well, in, 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 in the backyard from behind my house, I have a Snoopy garden that is some selected plantings surrounding a cementitious statue of Snoopy in all of his glory saying welcome. In fact, I think that there was some artist that actually uh, some maybe five or six years ago actually made a bronze uh, sculpture of Snoopy that was very very pricey I can't remember exactly but it was it was uh, ex in excess of a thousand dollars a regular bronze statue of Snoopy I don't know the the size but it was not diminutive it was it was a, a fairly good size Snoopy but it was beyond my means <laughs> to acquire. So there's a so there's a a price point that you won't go over when you see something. Uh, pretty much, I, I, I'm, uh, I'm I'm kind of a say uh, a uh, judicious buyer. <laughs>And is there something that you are currently looking for, or no? I, I can't became uh, uh, it, it, it became too time consuming that I had to kind of uh, phase myself out of it because I just didn't have time to uh, take care of that and, 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 and have enough time to earn a living. <laughs> has an, and has anyone ever questioned why you collect so much peanut stuff? You know, not not really. Nobody really asked that. Just uh, uh, and I guess they just understand. Is there anything that you can think about that's related to peanuts um, in your life that's outside of the collection or that we haven't really talked about? Uh, it, it's uh, something that uh, I know some of my my friends and my children enjoy uh, as having something that they can gift to me that they know I'll appreciate. And it's generally any Peanuts character that I don't already have. And uh, uh, and by that I don't mean the character, but, but that particular pose or whatever. And, and they, they always kind of smile and, and giggle with glee when they manage to give me something that I haven't already acquired. And uh, I spend a good bit of, of present opening time opening Peanuts characters. Can you talk a little bit about uh, Christmas time and displays that you've done over the years, if, if it's well, something significant? I, I, had always enjoyed uh, preparing for Christmas and sharing it with the with the children and grandchildren. And when peanuts became popular, there was a, a whole new supply of, of Christmas decorations, some that were lighted and animated that were just so wonderful to work in to, to your decorating season. And I really went in for that wholeheartedly. I, I have certain illuminated uh, items that, that were made especially for outdoor display that I mount on the second floor face of the house where, where they're safe from 
from uh, vandalism, but yet can be seen and enjoyed. And uh, it, it just, pe people will actually make a point to drive by just to look at these things. Now, how does that make you feel? You just, you just feel that, 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 that you're, you're sharing the uh, Snoopy spirit. It's kind of how I enjoy spending my time at uh, Christmas time. People say, why do you go through all that trouble? <laughs> well, it's something that, that you like doing, or at least something that I like doing. And how many years have you been doing that? Uh, probably, let me think, it had it would have to be uh, uh, since the uh, very early 60s because I, I came to Florida in 61 and uh, and I shortly thereafter bought a house and that's where I display my my Christmas decorations and so on. So it's be from the, from the early 60s that I've been been doing fairly lavish outdoor decorations. So at the end of the day, um, what would you say about your collection? Would you, what would you want to convey to people about your collection? Well, I, I think that that it, it is uh, if they embrace Schultz's philosophy about a comic strip and what it uh, should convey. Snoopy furnishes it all. I mean, Peanuts furnishes it all. From the wisdom of, of Linus about the, uh, the Bible to uh, Snoopy's uh, 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 ability to, to, to try cases in court. <laughs> and uh, it's it, it just uh, such, such a an amazing presentation of wholesomeness. So I know you, you didn't get a chance to meet Charles Schultz, uh, but if you had the opportunity to talk to him and talk to him about the strip and about just peanuts in general, is something that you would like to say to him? I, I would just like to express how I feel he has really made a change in, in, in the way comic cartoons are portrayed because he has a philosophy that, that makes his characters very lovable. But Schultz is a very remarkable man, I think, in, in making a strip about peanuts so popular. And I don't know if it's anything to do with this, but in today's paper, this, the peanut strip has, uh, I forget who the character, but it has somebody saying there with pimples all over their faces. Doctor, somewhere you're allergic to peanuts. <laughs> it's, it's, in, it's either in yesterday's or today's paper. I was going to cut it out to show it to you. I think it might still be on, on the table at my new house. But anyhow, it just it's a, you're allergic to peanuts. So, so you're you've already moved to a new house. Is this collection, how is it going to get moved over uh, to the new location? Well, I, I, uh, I don't have room in the new house for these cases because the new house is, is uh, just under 3,000 square feet and this house is 5,500. And uh, I just don't have the room to, and I, I will... I will probably end up displaying maybe a half a dozen, uh, you know, 
Peanuts uh, characters, mostly Snoopy, uh, in in the new house. I think that what what the plan is is because uh, for several years I've been uh, involved in estate liquidation business, and the YMCA here, uh, who the the current director is coincidentally also named Karen. Uh, I, I've done a lot of work for they they would would do a uh, tag sale for me uh, of course they get a percentage of it but uh, uh, there's uh, certain things that uh, are just you know expendable that you don't, you don't have room for them you got to get rid of them well thank you so much for taking the time to meet with us and, and well, talk to I, us about your collection. I, this is really a pleasure for me because this this is something that just just like I, I do it because I love it